Do you want to get your Chrome Web Apps on the big screen? Well, we've made it easier than ever before. Hi, I'm Sachit Mishra from the Google Developer Relations team, and I'm going to tell you about the Cast Sender Framework API for Chrome. In October 2016, we launched the Cast Framework API for the Google Cast SDK. The Framework API is built on top of the Cast Sender SDK and simplifies several parts of the SDK while addressing the major pain points identified by content partners and developers. The Cast Framework API significantly reduces the amount of code needed by providing a UI widget that fully complies with the Cast UX design checklist and a remote player binding that is super simple to hook into your media player implementation. First, here is some terminology about how casting works. The Google Cast Sender application refers to Chrome running on a mobile device or laptop, and the receiver application refers to an HTML application running on Chromecast or other Google Cast receiver devices. Now, let's take a look at the typical lifecycle of a Cast Sender app. When the Sender app is launched, Cast receiver devices need to be discovered on the local network. Once the user selects a device, the Sender app will connect to that device and launch the receiver app. The Sender app then creates a message channel to the receiver app to send and receive messages. The user can also disconnect from that device. The new framework API implements these new features. A UI cast button, which handles its own state and complies with a Google Cast design checklist. A remote player binding for easy remote media playback. Automatic device discovery, so that you don't have to manage that in your code. Centralized cast session state management. And a recognition service that automatically handles network issues to keep your sender app connected to the receiver. Let's take a look at how to add cast to your app. To load the JavaScript library into your app, add this script tag into all pages of your app which require it. When the library is loaded by the page, it will call the double underscore on gcast api available function callback on the global window object. So make sure to set that before loading the library. Now let's look at what this initialization function should do. The cast framework has a global singleton object, the cast context, which coordinates all cast interactions. To initialize, you must provide it with a cast options object using the set options method. In the cast options object, specify the receiver application ID created in the cast developer console, or use the default media receiver app ID. You can also set the language, auto join policy, and whether to resume the save session in the cast options object. Before we move on, let's talk about UI for a second. Chrome provides a cast option in the browser menu but you can make the option more easily visible to your users by adding the cast button directly in your UI, like your media control interface. The cast framework provides a button element for you. Simply add it using the is Google cast button property. This button provides the connected color and disconnected color styling attributes for state color control. Style this button as necessary and let the framework handle the rest, like visibility management and click event handling. Going back to the code, once you've got the cast context instance, you can get the current cast session object. The framework handles maintenance of the session and connection for you, but you can listen for events like media or volume changes using event listener callbacks set on the cast session object. All right, now that you've got your cast session object, we can move on to the fun stuff, media playback. Loading media onto the receiver works the same as before. The sender app has to create a media info instance with the URL and content type of the media stream. It then has to use this media info object to initialize a load request that can be used by the load media method of the cast session object. Now that media has been loaded, media playback can be controlled with the remote player binding. Here's where the framework API makes things super simple. To control media playback, initialize a remote player object and use it to instantiate a remote player controller object. Remote Player Controller provides methods to directly control remote media playback, like playing, pausing, stopping, and more. Let's take a deeper look at these objects. The Remote Player object is actually just a simple state encapsulation with no behavior of its own. Remote Player Controller binds the Remote Player object to the device state, and sometimes uses its property values in playback control methods, like seek. Keep in mind that, because Remote Player has no behavior, you can really use any object you want which contains the needed state. This example in Angular 
perfectly demonstrates how easy it is to hook the remote player implementation into your app and how these two objects can be used. So how do you monitor media status? You can query the remote player state object, as mentioned before, or you can directly set event listeners on the remote player controller. Some events, like playing or pausing, muting, and volume changes, can occur outside of your app's control. Your app will need to act on the events to synchronize itself with the receiver app on the cast device. Once the user is finished casting, they may disconnect your app. Add a listener on the remote player controller for the is connected changed event to update your app accordingly. That's it. That's everything you need to cast enable your app. You can get more details about the Google Cast SDK at developers.google.com cast. It's also important to take a look at the cast design checklist, which has design implications for your app. We have also open sourced sample cast apps that you can use as a reference. If you have any developer questions, post those on Stack Overflow. Join our Google Cast developers community on G to keep up to date with SDK updates and discuss with other developers. I'm Sachit Mishra. Thanks for watching and happy casting. Thank <laughs> you.